Good, you're back. I'm Neom, and today's episode is about the pastry war. Before we get started, I want to say thank you to my subscribers for helping me reach the 100 subscriber milestone, which may seem small, but every subscriber has been a big deal to me, and for wanting to be a part of this journey with me. If you're new to the channel, thanks for being here. Remember to leave a like if you enjoy. And now, let's get into it. The year is 1821. Um, actually, Neom, the year is 2022. <laughs> Mexico had just declared its independence from Spain after an 11-year war cleverly named the Mexican War of Independence, and it took the newly independent country about 30 years and 30 leaders to decide on a form of government and set of policies for the Mexican people to live by. Among the deposings, executions, and possibly the invention of what we think of as the street taco, a more notable event could be found, the pastry war. During their time of government lacking lawlessness, the destruction and looting of private property was extremely common, sometimes by civilians, but often by Mexican soldiers. Complaints were abundant. Property owners were making claims left and right, hoping that the Mexican government would compensate them for the damage done to their property, but every request was denied. Fortunately, Geico was just a hop, skip, and a jump away in Fort Worth, Texas. Unfortunately, it wouldn't be established for like 150 years. 15 decades won't save you 15% or more on any insurance. Still seeking compensation, they turned to their countries of origin for help, but still their cries went unheard. After Mexico gained its independence, they kept their alliance with Spain in order to keep trade. However, while Mexico's relationship with Spain was blossoming, their relationship with France was in decline. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine, when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. France had sent settlers to Mexico to join the city of Veracruz, and was slow to recognize Mexico as a sovereign nation. The relationship worsened as French business owners became subject to the ongoing ransacking. In 1828, the looting reached an all-time high, when President Manuel Gomez Pedraza attempted to forcefully depose Lorenzo de Zavala from his office as governor of Mexico City. Zavala fought back with a small faction of the military that was still loyal to him, and actually won, removing Pedraza from his presidency. It was during this battle that soldiers pillaged the Parian marketplace, including a pastry shop owned by one Monsieur Raimontel. According to Raymontel's account, his shop was left completely devastated and all the food stolen and eaten. I guess if America runs on Duncan, Mexico ran on Eclairs, or something. Like his predecessors, Raymontel took his complaint to the Mexican government first, seeking 60,000 pesos in recompense, roughly 60 times the amount his shop and its contents were actually worth, but whatever. His demands were, of course, ignored, and he also turned to his homeland for security. For whatever reason, this particular plea caught the attentions of King Louis-Philippe of France, who was outraged by the atrocity. Sir, we have another complaint. A lady claims her shop was burned down by Mexican soldiers. Uh, uh, okay, uh, this person says he was intruded by a hundred soldiers, beaten and robbed. Also, they trampled his cat on the way out. Ugh, let me know when something bad happens. Monsieur Remontel writes that his pastry shop was intruded, with moderate damage, and all his cheese danishes and bagels were stolen and eaten. What? Louis-Philippe called up Mexico. Er, no, this was 1830-something. He faxed Mexico and demanded that 600,000 pesos be dished out to all those who had suffered property damage at the hands of the Mexican military. Mexico went no, and France was like yes, and Mexico was like still no, and France was all fine, I'll send a big military to occupy Mexico, and Mexico was like do it, see what happens. So, France sent the military, and then saw what happened. After a few days of infiltration and blockades by France, Mexico declared war on them. General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana, after failing to quell a rebellion in Texas two years prior, came out of retirement to boldly try and redeem his glorious career. He didn't. Within a few days, the French army had beaten back the Mexican troops, and Mexico was left with no other option but to pay the 600,000 pesos, which included the 60,000 peso demand from our hero, Monsieur Raymontel, which ultimately meant a victory for France and her people. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe for more content, ring the bell to be notified about new videos, and comment what you want to learn about next. I'm Neon, and I'll see you next time.